In this tutorial, we are going to see how easy it is to start working with Reality. If you just install Reality, check that the plugin shows in the render menu. If it doesn't, if you don't see this menu option, then it means you have to register the plugin with the studio. And this is done by clicking on the help menu and clicking on the about install plugins. Here you will find the reality plugin and hopefully it will say loaded. Now under Macintosh, you will see reality.dialib. Under Windows, you will either have uh, reality.dll or reality64.dll for the 64-bit version. Next, there will be a field where you can enter your serial number as provided by DAS and then a button that says register like this one here. You press the button, verify that the registration is done successfully, and then you just need to press OK here and quit Studio and restart it. And when you restart it, reality should appear here in the menu. So at this point, we have everything set correctly, and uh, let's create a scene from scratch. The first time you use reality, I invite you to start fresh. Don't try to render a scene that you already made in a studio because a few things are different and there is a slightly different workflow and it's easier if you start fresh so if you start with a new scene so uh, for this tutorial i'm going to use the egyptian uh, set we have here let me load it in studio here it is and um, First thing, I want to change my camera parameters because the default camera is a little too narrow. So we're going to go here in the focal length and I'm going to change this to 40 millimeters so it gives me a much wider uh, field of view. And I'm going to change this a little bit just to have a better frame, a little more interesting. Okay something like this a little dramatic uh, uh, low angle and the next thing we want to do is to create a light source and i'm gonna uh, keep things simple for now so we we want to use one single light and in this case it's going to be a sunlight to create a sunlight you simply create a new distant lighting studio and change the name to sun in reality will automatically recognize that light to be the sunlight and it will configure Lux to use a sun and atmosphere and uh, Lux will render that sunlight in a very nice realistic way. Now the sun can be changed to uh, have any position during the arc of the day. The only thing you have to worry about is the angle of the sun, not the position itself. The best way of orienting the sun is to look at the scene through the sun. And this is something that you can do through the camera selection menu in uh, Studio. It's a great feature of Studio. So you select sun. And from this point of view, we can see that the sun is basically at the horizon, looking straight ahead, which is really not a very interesting uh, type of light. The light is straight in front of the walls. There is really no much uh, interest in this. What I want to create is some shadows. And this is an important part of lighting. Lighting is all about shadows. When you're lighting a scene uh, for photography or cinematography, shadows play an incredibly important role. Shadows add depth to an otherwise 2D image. They add drama. They add interest. So the role of shadows is fundamental in uh, any scene and is something that you should set up at the beginning. So what we want to do in this case is to have a, a sun that is a little more at an angle because right now we are basically at the sunset or sunrise moment. Now if I had the sun like this, uh, this is almost midday sun. It's a little too vertical looking down. So what I want to do is to basically have a, a nice angle on the sun that can project some very long shadows and um, 
I like to be in this position here because the camera will be looking this way. So if the sun is at this angle, it will project shadows in this way. So the shadows will be clearly visible by the camera, or so I hope. And uh, that will be a nice type of lighting. So let's try this. And now we can switch back to default camera. Okay, and uh, it's a nice angle. Now let's call reality. This is all we need to do. Now, reality will read the materials uh, very quickly and um, give you this interface where you can change the materials if you need. Now, those changes are only inside the reality. They don't change anything in, uh, in the studio uh, shaders. Uh, but here you can see for each material that there is a type uh, associated and this type can be any of these types here and reality takes its best guess and uh, here you can further change the characteristics of the materials so for example uh, i can uh, i can look at the texture pressing the view uv button here's the texture of my uh, wall in this case and you can change the level of glossiness, you can change all the other parameters. But right now, we are not going to change anything. We are just going to keep it in this way. It's easy, easy, easy. Lights. Lights uh, will determine the control of lights. Right now, we only have one sunlight, so there is nothing to do here. If I look in my output tab, this is where I decide where I want to save the lux scene file now the way reality works is simple it will read your scene and generate a file for lux with all the information from the scene all the geometry materials etc converted and here is where you select where that file will be stored will be saved and the name for that file by default the file is called reality scene.lxs Right now, it's saved in my desktop, so it's perfectly fine. I'm going to change this name a little bit. I'm going to just call this Egypt. Okay? And I could use my save file uh, dialog box as usual, but in this case, I just typed the name. And I'm going to change the same here and call it Egypt. There you go. Now you see here that the window has a caption saying without extension because the extension is derived automatically from the file type. And the file type for your render is by default ping, PNG. So this will be Egypt.png. Here we have a bunch of other parameters, but for now we're going to just focus on the frame size that this is taken directly from the studio render settings. So this is basically HD 720p, 1280 by 720. And it's a little too much for now. So uh, I can just uh, reduce this to a 50% of that size. And this is 640 by 360. And all I need to do at this point is simply to click render frame. And when I'll press this button, Reality will gather all the data from your scene, export it to Lux, and call Lux automatically. And you'll see in a second how fast this operation can be. Ready? Let's go. Export and launch. And here we can see Lux started rendering your scene. Now the scene doesn't appear line by line as with other renderers from the top bottom. Lux first renders the entire scene in one pass and then starts refining it as it just happened. And all this is in real time right now. So it will refine the scene with different passes, gathering more and more data as it samples each pixel for light. And each sample will add information and it will add quality to the, to the scene. Now you can see here, this number here, it says 34, 35, 36 samples per pixel. This is the measure of the fidelity of your scene. 
generally you need anywhere around five eight hundred samples per pixel to get something uh, decent and generally you want two to three thousand samples per pixel uh, to get good quality images. This can change dramatically from scene to scene, resolution to resolution, but these are good numbers. I'm giving you these numbers because right now, as you can see, Lux keeps refining the image and Lux will not stop until you quit the program. So yes, you heard right. Lux will not stop rendering until you decide to stop the process. If you let it go for two weeks, it will keep on going for two weeks. You will not see many improvements after a few hours, but that is the procedure in Lux. So many times you have very decent results in a very short time, but this is the logic behind it. Now you can see right now we have very good shadows. I like this. This is a good setting. This is a good configuration. And if I click on my log here, you will see that at some point Lux wrote a ping file to disk. Now let's switch to the file viewer. Now we can see the Egypt LXS, LXO, and LXM. So these are all generated by reality and these are uh, files required by Lux. And then we have Egypt.png, and this is exactly the scene that has been rendered, and it is ready for you to use anytime. In fact, you can even rename it if you want. And when Lux will generate another ping file, you have basically both. Now, if you decide for any reason to stop the render at this point, it's perfectly fine. Go to the Quit Lux Render option in the menu, you close it, and now you can see that another PNG file has been generated. This is the latest status of the render. And now we can look at both, and you can see that there is indeed a difference in quality between the two. So anytime you decide that the render is good enough, just close Lux and your final image will be on disk. So this is really, in a nutshell, all that it takes to render your scenes in Lux using the Reality plugin for DAS Studio. I hope this was useful. My name is Paolo Ciccone for Preta 3D, 3D ready to wear. I'll see you next time. Thank you.